They call me Mellow Yellow. Quite rightly. They call me Mellow Yellow. Hey, hey, welcome to Half the Battle. Crimson Guards. There certainly have been bad figures, hello Python Patrol version, and great ones like the original. But has there ever been an aggressively mediocre one? Oh my, yes! Meet the Crimson Guard Commander. This figure was released in 1993 with all original body parts. And the overall look is, well, unique, but in an unremarkable way. It's sort of hard to describe. It's not that it looks bland, but that it feels bland. Maybe it's because I'm mentally comparing it to the previous Crimson Guard figures. And it ain't gonna win that battle. Okay, it ain't gonna win most of those battles. But let's look at the figure in detail. Let's start at the top with the helmet. Comparing it to previous Crimson Guards, yeah, now I see why the word bland came to mind. It's just a smooth yellow faceplate and black helmet with only ridges on the back to make it stand out. It's not very impressive. It also doesn't scream Crimson Guard to me. Hell, it reminds me most of the version 2 Battle Android Trooper. Going a little further down, things get more interesting. In front of some black padding, he's got a breastplate with a round dish on it that has the Cobra logo molded in. This is very nice to see, as usually any Cobra logos on figures are just paint applications. It would have been nice if the logo was both molded and painted in red, or hell, even yellow. So, knowing myself, if that were the case, I would have complained that it painted a big yellow target in the middle of his chest. One peculiar thing about the Cobra logo is that it also has a molded trademark symbol right below it. I know I've seen this on another figure, and even complained about it in another review, but gun to my head, I don't remember when I did. I do remember saying that while this makes a little sense for Hasbro protecting their trademark and all, it makes zero sense in-universe. Unless Cobra Commander is really committed to safeguarding his brand. His brand that is a ruthless terrorist organization. Then again, Cobra often uses lawyers in the comics to get their way, so maybe it's not that out of character. Anyway, back to the figure. He sure has a lot of straps. Straps to keep that logo disc in place. Straps for his gun holster and pocket. Even his belt looks like a strap. And while you can see that they all serve a purpose, when viewing the figure overall, it looks like he's wearing a flight suit that should have a parachute. It muddles the water a bit about what this figure is supposed to be. As far as the detailing goes, there's some nice padding on the chest and the Cobra logo really is very nice, but the rest of the figure is average. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I call this toy mediocre. And I want to stress that this isn't a bad thing. Hell, the definition of average or mediocre is that it isn't good or bad. If you have an average looking car, then that's a perfectly fine car to drive. So, this figure is perfectly fine, there's just nothing about it that makes me go cool or whoa. And speaking of mediocre, let's talk about his accessories. Now sing along with me, they're a generic weapon tree, that saves Hasbro quite a buck, man they didn't give a fu- He's also got a generic yellow missile launcher. The only good thing I can say about the weapons is that they're black and not neon. The bad is that they are goofy looking ones. What's wrong with some nice Uzis or something? I honestly don't know what more to say about this figure. It's fine, I guess. The mold is fine, the colors are fine, hell I don't even mind the yellow. It only really looks bad when you put it next to the OG Crimson Guard or the later Immortal. So, in conclusion, it's fine. And that was the only figure the Crimson Guard Commander ever got in the original line. Not surprising, considering this figure was from 1993. In modern times, there were figures called Crimson Guard Officer and Squad Leader, but not Commander, and they certainly didn't look like this one, so one figure is all we got. That means it's time to talk about the character, starting and finishing with the file card. Yeah, the Crimson Guard Commander never appeared in the cartoons or comics as far as I could tell, so that just leaves the card. And we have to start with the name, as it can be a tad confusing. You see, back in 1985, Tomax and Zaymat were released, and they were called the Crimson Guard Commanders. But this figure is not one of them with his face covered up. It's a completely new character. I'm assuming Hasbro thought enough time had passed between the release of the twins and this figure that nobody would notice. 
But we did notice. Us collectors always notice. Don't mess with us, Hasbro. And hey, why aren't there any G.I. Joe products in Belgium anyway? I swear! <laughs> Sorry, I'm fine now. Hot weather was getting to me. Anyway, another thing to note is that on the card art, the yellow bits of the figure, and the rocket launcher for that matter, look more green. So I guess they were working off a prototype for the packaging. On to the card itself. The commanders have a motto. Being the best in Cobra, trademark, means being the worst in the world. I'm gonna assume the writer totally intended that to sound like a negative, so I'm calling it clever. The card states they are good at what they do, and even Duke admits they are some of the toughest Cobra soldiers around. Cobra Commander makes them swear an oath of loyalty to him personally, because they're his top officers and could be a serious threat if they ever turned on him. Okay, I gotta admit, the card does make him seem pretty damn badass, so good job there. And they hearken back to the original Crimson Guard, not just by saying that they swear loyalty to Cobra Commander personally, but also by mentioning they are found at every level of Cobra operations, including espionage. That's nice to see. Their favorite weapon is a modified AK-47 laser assault rifle. I'm sorry, a freaking what now? Okay, let's ignore the laser part, this is G.I. Joe after all, where lasers are a way of life, even if a laser AK-47 makes no goddamn sense. Let's instead focus on what weapon that's supposed to be. Because the figure doesn't come with anything even remotely like an AK-47! The card points to the weapon he's holding as being that, but it doesn't look like a gun he came with. Unless they mean this thing, which is far too large for that, and is a repaint of the Rock Viper rifle. Yeah, this just makes no sense. And that's about it for the card. They're good at what they do. As far as them being the last hurrah for the Crimson Guards in the original G.I. Joe line, they are, there's that word again, mediocre. Honestly, if you want to see these figures as being Tomax and Zaymat in battle armor, that'd be a perfectly valid choice for your own cannon. And that was the Crimson Guard Commander. Average. Perfectly fine. An okay figure and character. It gets a heartfelt and emotional shrug from me. Well folks, the summer months are upon us. And that means that here on Half the Battle, we're gonna take things a bit easier, focusing on small vehicles and playsets, with some fun stuff in between. Oh yeah, I'm in vacation mode from this moment on. 2020 has been one hell of a year. And it's only half over. It's only half over. Well, I'll see you next time, everybody. And hey, why not like, share, and subscribe if that's your thing? They call me mellow yellow, bright, bright, sleep. They call me mellow.